Hey, this is Khadar and today we are going to see two simple ways of getting power supply for mobile charging and lighting systems during power outages. So if there is a very long power outage, then you may have a problem of mobile charging or, or even lights. So today we are going to see how we can use the simple things in our home to get this power supply. So starting with the first one, the landline cable. For this first trick, we need to find the landline junction where you get you will connect this landline pin so we need to open this box and we'll see that there are two connections here two terminals so we'll check the voltage here which we'll get so i, I have kept the dc voltage uh, in the 200 volts range now i'll check the voltage if you see you're getting around 52 volts actually these are the serial pulses of 52 volts each which you are getting in the landline wire so now we'll try to connect something and see if it lights or not so first i'll remove this junction this pin and i'll connect my circuit here and you can see that the leds are growing glowing from this power this is a landline cable and no supply is connected to this so what actually happening here is i've taken the two wires coming from this junction positive and negative and I have connected a bridge rectifier here. To this bridge rectifier, I have connected a capacitor in parallel at the output. This is the capacitor. And from this capacitor output, I have connected these two LEDs. So usually it's 52 volts. The, these two LEDs should burn out. But due to the very low current, it's about 50 milliamps or so. So due to the low current, these LEDs are able to withstand it. And these are one watt LEDs. But make sure whenever you connect these LEDs, the landline will stop working and you get an engaged tone in the landline. So if you're not uh, using a landline, then you can use these LEDs. But if you are about to use a landline, better remove this connection than use the landline. So the second trick is using the inverter. Yes, I know most of you people must be knowing how to use an inverter because automatically the inverter will switch on when the power is off. But after 2-3 days of working, the switch, inverter will automatically switch off. That means it's dead. But actually, we are going to use the inverter battery after the inverter is dead. Even if the inverter is dead or literally switched off, there is enough power in the battery of the inverter to be used to light LEDs. Lots and lots of LEDs. Even when the inverter is switched off, there is enough voltage in the battery of about 11 to 11.5 volts or maybe a little less, which can be used to light LEDs. For example, say each LED, each LED needs a voltage of 3.3 .3 volts if it's a white LED and a current of 330 milliamps if it's a 1 watt LED. And what we are going to do is, for this 11 volts, we are going to connect a voltage regulator, say 7806. So for this 7806, the output will be 6 volts, it will be regulated to 6 volts. But each LED needs 3.3 .3 volts. So what we are going to do is, we are going to connect a small resistor, say about 47 ohms here to increase the voltage to about 6.5 to 6.6 .6 volts so the voltage which we get here is 6.6 .6 volts approximately so this 6.6 .6 volts can drive two leds in series and what we are going to do is we are going to connect two such chains in parallel so now this is a 4 watt bulb So when we connect this positive to this positive and this negative terminal to this negative terminal and these two terminals are connected to the inverter battery, then these LEDs will be lit. So this circuit will work until the battery voltage drops to about 7 volts. So until then you can use the battery to light these LEDs. And mostly the battery used for the inverters is at least 100 amp power battery. So for this rating the LEDs can light for 10 hours or even a lot more than that. 
if you have to use this same battery for mobile charging what we'll do is instead of 7806 what we're going to connect is 7805 regulator without a resistor so when we give this 11 volts or 7 volts the output will be 5 volts DC so what we can do here is we can connect a USB pin here so that we can connect a USB cable and charge our mobiles in this case it is better always better to connect a small amount of resistor in series so that we can control the current going to the mobile so this resistor can be about 20 ohms so LEDs are connected like this these two are in series and these two are in series and two such chains are connected in parallel so these are connected through this wire to these regulators there are three 7806 regulators connected in parallel to increase the current rating so each can give up to 1.5 amps and three in parallel can give about 4.5 amps so I made this so that if I want to extend the number of LEDs I can easily do without replacing the regulators so currently these lights are running on my solar charging station so this is a battery 12 volts battery this is a 7 amp battery on which these LEDs are running so I'll switch on and show you how the LEDs are lit I made the LEDs connection permanent for my solar charging station but if you want you can make it temporary by connecting the input terminals of the regulators to two alligator clips the positive and negative and you can easily connect or remove to the inverter battery the third trick is using the automobile battery so if you have a bike you can remove the battery of the bike and connect it to the inverter to switch on the inverter but it won't have enough power to uh, run all the appliances but it will at least run a single bulb may a 10 watt bulb or you can even use this battery to light the LEDs so for this if you replace the inverter battery with this bike battery so for the fourth one DC motors when I connect LED to the both the terminals of a DC motor and apply mechanical force then you can see that the LED is lighting up so this can be used to charge batteries rechargeable batteries which I showed you how to make in the last video so the fifth one is electrolytic cells in my last video I showed you how to make these rechargeable cells using alum and lead plates but these cells initially do not give any voltage until they are charged so to make them give voltage initially what we'll do is we'll replace the lead plates with copper and zinc electrodes so in that case you'll get about one volt and that one volt can be used to light an LED using a jowl tree this can run an LED for about 3 to 4 hours in a dim lighting so these are the 5 ways of getting electricity in small quantities during power outages to charge our mobiles or lights so if you like my videos please subscribe